Well, we're going to get started now. Um, so we've got today we're going to talk about basically the kind of the, the top things that we've seen um, on when we work with websites um, with just a variety of things, either things that we've learned over time, uh, things that we have what we know that happens. Um, and so I think that this is going to be a really important topic for everybody that can do there. So uh, my name is Patrick uh, Canole. I am the Director of Organic Marketing uh, here at Oozle Media. Uh, I have been working um, in the SEO industry for over five years now. And it's something that I have a big passion for. And I put this together with a lot of help from uh, our web development team. Um, so a big shout out and thanks to them. They're really awesome and, and great to work with. And so highly recommend them, obviously. Um, but this, these are just some of the things that we find when, we, when people launch their new websites. And this is something that we actually even deal with on, on a regular basis, to be honest. Um, and so it's something that we want to kind of dispel and, and help uh, others understand what's going on uh, here with, the, with websites and understand why it's important to have somebody with an SEO mind um, and a marketing mind involved with uh, your new website uh, involved. So we're gonna get started now um, on that. So first off, congrats, you got a new website. It's always great, it's always a good feeling, but we have to remember, is it SEO friendly? So like I mentioned, here's a couple of website launches that we're dealing with like literally right now. You can see the time frame on here. This website launched right here and immediately lost all the rankings. We start started working with them uh, right in here probably um, and then it took a little bit and we're still working to try to get some of that uh, ranking back overall. This is a screenshot from what's called Google Search Console which tracks organic uh, rankings and impressions and, and things like that for search queries that people do. Um, so it doesn't include anything that is paid or anything like that so this is solely tracking organic things which is really great to see SEO progress or or lack thereof. Um, here's another one that just launched in March. Again, you can see they launched without having any of our any SEO uh, in mind. And by comparison, here are a couple. I mean, these are a couple of our really good examples. Not every example is going to be the same here, but we launched a website in um, in roughly October, and then by January we were seeing a good SEO boost, which again, like I said, is a testament to our our team and the web dev team and how up to date they are on a lot of this. Uh, same thing here, website launched uh, roughly October again, and you can see after, after a little bit that SEO kind of kicks in um, as we go along. And that's very typical of SEO. It takes three, six, sometimes even a year, um, three to six months to a year to, to actually see uh, a return on investment. Sometimes it's quicker than that, but it's just a, a matter of looking at uh, uh, how Google works and how Google wants to put up good websites uh, for you. So we have a checklist that we're that we are in the process of making. Um, that checklist should go out to everybody who who attended this webinar, um, and plus it will be available on our on our blog um, for anybody who sees it in the future. Uh, it's got 40, 50 plus different checkpoints that we go through every single time that we launch a website. Um, there's some things that we do like well before we even get into the development of the website all the way through development and the launch and then after the launch some things to make sure that we that we did everything properly and just keep an eye on it because it's really really important for us to see that the website works we at Uzo Media believe that your website is like the Rome it's all all roads in your digital marketing and even your offline marketing should come back to uh, the website. And so that website should be your 24 hour salesman and it should be the number one place where you get conversions. So <clears throat> one of the first things we look at, and I'll move this over here so everybody can see a little bit better, but is um, website structure changes, meaning the URL of the website, not necessarily the code or anything like that, but we're really looking at the URL of the website. So that's a little bar at the top. And Google treats every single URL as a unique individual page of a website. So even taking a simple change from like mywebsite.com slash services slash my first service to mywebsite.com slash my first service, 
would mean that Google robots read that as an entirely new page on the site unless you implement a proper redirect uh, to that page. So when Google comes in, they have little robots that come in on the site and they will read the code and then bring it back to Google who will then put it in their library, their index of sorts um, onto the site. And if they see a different uh, URL, this part right here, then they would treat it like, oh, it's a brand new page. It's something that I haven't seen before. So any domain authority, any links that you had before to this, to this website, any good SEO work that you had done to this page previously, it's gone. Doesn't matter. Google doesn't care anymore. So you have to implement what's called a redirect onto that. There's a lot of simple ways of doing this. There's several plugins. If you're using a, a, a WordPress site or your web developer can help you um, on this uh, to implement what's called a 301 redirect. 301 redirects basically say to Google, this page was here, it's now moved to here. Please pass any, any, anything that we've gained SEO wise to this new page. Makes it super simple for Google to do that. Um, website changes happen with um, the, the URLs. It just, it just does um, and that's okay. Um, ideally, you don't have to change it very much when you launch a new website, but sometimes you do, and that's okay. Just make sure you implement a 301 redirect. We have a pretty uh, rigorous process in the, in the likes that we take the uh, entire website, we crawl it from both the new website and the old website, match up the URLs, make sure that everything's matched up, take those URLs, and anything that doesn't match, find a proper redirect for it if necessary. Sometimes there are some pages that we're okay with letting die, like it's not a, it's not a service you offer anymore, or it's not a, uh, not an important part of the website anymore. But that's something that is really important, and it's something that you have to do. Usually, we find even if we take all the care in the world to try to prop map map it out properly. When I'm doing these pre-launch checklist things, I usually find at least ten to twenty uh, different URLs that we just didn't weren't aware of that or that could have been gaining traffic in some way, shape, or form, that we just make sure that we, that we implement a redirect on them. So let's talk about your website architecture real quick. When you're designing a new website, make sure that you don't have a confusing way of getting around the website. So you'll notice on here, we have kind of a little bit of a map. So you see the home page of the website right here, and then there's for instance, there's only two links on this homepage, and those go to the About Us page and the blog. Well, then you can get from the blog to the Sign Up page and to the Client Service page, but you can't get there from the homepage. And then the About Us page, you can get to the product list, and then in order to get to that, you can get to this portfolio page. So you can see how it's very confusing. It's this intertangled web of, of not good SEO work. Um, this is what we call, uh, this is just the spider web of, of it missed tangled information. This is not a good way of, of having your website. So make sure that you have that. What we want to look for is a flat site architecture as best we can or a, and not as deep as we go. So this is an example of a deep site architecture where you have your homepage and then you've got, okay, I would just want to make this really simple. I'm going to put three links up there and then those ones can lead to other pages on the site. What happens is, your website authority, basically what Google does is says, this is your most important page, I'm gonna rank this page up here. Then these will be the next most important, then these ones, then these ones, then these ones, and maybe I'll get down to something below that. What happens is, is these pages become very weak, and if you have an important page over here, say a, an important product page, for instance, or an important service, or something like that, it will be, it will receive less value from Google. And so what we want to do instead is have what we call a flat site architecture. Meaning, can I, from, a, from the home page, get to the most important pages on the, on the site right away? This is not only makes it easier for your users, but also Google to understand these are all important pages. It used to be that Google cared about um, the, the number of slashes in your file folders uh, on there, they don't care about that anymore, but rather they care about what's called click depth, meaning they care how many clicks does it take for me to get from the home page, your most important page, to another page. And if it's farther away, which is sometimes okay, then that's gonna be viewed as less important. If it's closer, then that's something really important. We work with a lot of schools and they have a lot of program pages, 
or location pages. And sometimes those end up getting buried for whatever reason. Um, just the simple act of bringing them up to the front tends to help out a lot um, because that allows A, the users to get there quickly, B, Google to get there quickly, and C, just helps, uh, helps people get the information. Everybody gets more information on what they want. So this is something to keep in mind in your pre-planning process of your website and something that an SEO person should check up on regardless of what happens. Um, so here's what I was talking about with mapping out your redirects. So what we do is we use a site crawler. We like uh, uh, Be Myself is what I actually use a lot, but Screaming Frog is very uh, popular. If we got a typo there, I'll make sure we click, correct that later. But this is Mods is another uh, popular one. Basically what you want to do is you say, we have this courses page, it was an advanced laser tech page, but that's now going to go to be our master medical aesthetics program page. And so you can see how we just map that out from this page to this page, and then we implement the redirect on the back end of the website, and then Google can automatically just go to that page, not only Google, but also users. So if a user were to type this in, or click on a link that we forgot somewhere or something, they click that, it'll automatically take them from this page to the other page uh, that we're working with. Okay, next up uh, is website content. Now, I'm an SEO person. I, this is what I love to do. I, I like the technical side. I like the, the, the non-technical side. But honestly, the number one reason why, why SEO works is written content. Without written content on your site, Google has nothing to crawl. Users have nothing to view. And so literally, we say this all the time, 90% of SEO really is great written content. I'm not talking quantity, I'm talking quality. It's really important that you do that. One of those websites that I showed you earlier on, on one of the graphs, what they did was they didn't transfer over their blogs and they didn't transfer over some pages that were, that were um, getting some high value uh, content uh, uh, and, and rankings to their site. And by eliminating those pages, because like, ah, we don't need blogs, they lost a lot of their SEO work and a lot of the traffic coming to the site and it affected the site as a whole. So just remember that when I'm talking SEO, there's, yes, there's a lot of indexing and links and backlinks and, and other things like that. But realistically, if you don't have content on your site, you're never gonna rank well. And it needs to be great, unique content to you. We focus on that heavily and it helps out a lot. Make sure you transfer and slash or, depending on how good it is or how bad it is, your SEO on sites. Uh, this is a term that we use internally and a little bit, it's used definitely used externally as well, but for explanation, this is specifically talking about your title tag, your meta description, and your headers mostly, but mainly the title tag and meta description. A title tag is the very first thing that someone sees when they search for you organically. For Oozle Media, this is Oozle Media, colon, web design and online marketing in Utah. Um, we'll have a different webinar at some point talking about the important points of keyword research and, and on uh, understanding this part of it. But it's really critical, especially for home pages, but, uh, but also, also other important pages like location pages, program pages, service pages, uh, the contact us page, things like that. This is the very first impression that a brand new searcher to your brand will see. And so it's important that this title, title right here and this meta description uh, are optimized to uh, the keyword set that's important, okay? Next up, tracking codes. Um, mainly Google Analytics from an SEO perspective, but this can also include call tracking or heat mapping or, or paid ads or, or any, anything along the lines uh, there. Google Analytics, is critical for understanding how the traffic is, is moving about on your website. Um, and, and all these other types of tracking codes are very critical for understanding how, you, how your website works. So it's incredibly important that you transfer any tracking codes that were previously on the website to the new website to maintain a continuity of data. Um, if you don't have that, then you will not be, uh, then you will lose that data uh, at worst and, and at, at best, you, will, you just won't be able to see what's going on, okay? So that's a really important uh, part of your, of launching a website. So make sure that those tracking codes get transferred over. Super easy to miss because they're really usually just a small little bit of JavaScript or something. So it's really easy to miss this, but uh, critically important for evaluating your marketing efforts.
this is one of the major flaws that I see um, with a lot of um, websites is they don't configure their tags properly. So your meta robots tags, your robots.txt, those need to be, those are hyper important. A robots.txt by, by simple explanation is Google uses robots or bots to come and crawl the website and the content thereof and report back to Google. If you have something on there that says robot, don't come here, Google will respect your space and your privacy there and they won't index it. For instance, this is a website that I just got, a new brand new client that we just got like last month and they launched a new website, they're all excited about it and I, they're like, they came to us and they said, I don't show up for these keywords at all. Like my website doesn't show up. So then I looked, the very first thing I saw, robots, content, no index, no follow. That's robot SEO speak for robot, Google robots or any robots for that matter. Don't come here, don't index our site, don't follow any links. Meaning Google, we, this is not a website you should crawl, right? So this is something that is, again, simple to, to miss. Now, if you are in, you can do this in two places. One is in the meta robots is what that called, or secondarily in your robots.txt. If you put into any, pretty much any website, you can put usmedia.com slash robots.txt or any website out there. It should have something that like, looks like this. If it says disallow, and then they'll just a slash by itself, that means you're in trouble. That means robot, you are not allowed to go to anything past slash. So anything, any links that are on the website, any pages that are on the website, Google's not allowed to go there, so it won't go there. If you're on WordPress, there's a button right here in your settings. So if you go to your settings, then you click this button. This should be unchecked. This says discourage search engines from indexing your site. Now it's okay to have this on your website while it's in development. In fact, I, th I encourage that because when you are developing the website, you don't want a website that's indexed with a bunch of lorem ipsum or unstructured code or uh, things that are just not done yet. So it's so most of the time when a developer is creating the website, they'll have this checked um, or whatever version of website that you're using, they will have this checked. And then when you launch the website, if you don't simply uncheck this button, your results are gone. We actually had um, a long time ago. We actually had a developer and a launch, and a launch that happened on this, and they just didn't click this button, and found it a, a little while later. And you know, it uh, ended up being a very important but tough lesson for us to learn as a company. And so we had like a like I said, we literally followed this checklist in part because of that that client that that happened to. We owned up to it. Uh, it was something that obviously was a mistake on our end, um, and try to make up for it. But that's something that, from experience, you don't want to do, okay? So really important that, that you literally, it, it takes you two seconds to go into the settings, make sure that that search engine visibility is turned on. Uh, sitemap.xml. So a sitemap.xml is um, basically a list of all the, all the files on your, uh, all the pages on your website. Um, and so there, we use what's called the all-in-one SEO pack. Yoast is very popular as well. Um, you can also do it manually. There's also a ton of different plugins that can do this. Um, or, or if you're on another uh, non-WordPress site, there's other ways of doing this. Um, but basically, you want to make sure that all the pages on your site are listed. What happens is Google, uh, when the robots come to crawl your site, the first place they'll go is the robots.txt and see if there's any place that they can go to or not go to. The next place they'll go is the sitemap. And this sitemap says, Here are, here's a link of all the, here's all the links of all the pages on the site that you should visit because these are important to me. Uh, you don't need to have every single, every single like populated uh, link uh, out there, but it should have all of your pages on here that you want Google to potentially rank and slash or index uh, on their site. Um, if you have less than 10,000 uh, pages on your site, which would be the vast majority of people that, that, that have a website. You don't need to have what's called a sitemap underscore index uh, that just kind of groups in different files, but it's up to you however you want to do that. Um, it, it doesn't really matter from, from the from a SEO perspective. Uh, I like the cleaner example of just having the, all the links in a single place. Uh, it makes it easier to diagnose problems in the future, but that's up to you. 
when you configure this, you're going to configure it, and then you can resubmit it to Google uh, within the Google Search Console platform. We also have a, a, a resource to show you how to do that um, if you're interested in, in being able to do that. Um, it's something that just helps Google index your site faster and understand how your website structure is. Um, the, this isn't. Uh, this is a. This is a, a, an important step. Not necessarily going to kill your SEO like this one would, but it is something that you should do. And I'm also not talking about a sitemap for users. This is that's an old SEO tactic from many years ago, where you would put a sitemap down in like the footer or somewhere on the site that just said, "There's how you can navigate if you don't understand the rest of the navigation on our site." That's, that's not what this is. This is called a sitemap.xml. You can go to this on pretty much any website. Googlemedia.com slash sitemap.xml, and you can see how those can be configured. Like I said, when you uh, configure that sitemap, you could resubmit then your sitemap to Google Search Console. So you go to Google Search Console, there's a, in the menu, there's a sitemaps button. You click, you push, put sitemap.xml right here, click submit, it should give you a success. Um, after a day or two, it should show you all the discovered URLs via the sitemap that it found. Pretty simple, easy to do, helps your content get indexed more quickly, especially right after a website launch. And if there were any changes that you guys made to the website, this can be a critical uh, uh, part of, of, a, of a getting, keeping your rankings and getting them to come back more quickly. Uh, another thing that we consider is user experience or UX. Does it convert easily? Is it mobile friendly? Is it something that uh, is visually appealing? Is there an easy to convert uh, button uh, on the site? Is there a form on the website? Uh, we just had another client that we that we are, were working with that we're going to end up building them a new website that they launched a website, didn't have a form, a native form on the website. We told them, hey, you need to get a form on your website. There's, this is 2020. Not everybody wants to talk to you on the phone. Um, they sometimes just want to fill out a form and get more information and correspond over email, and then maybe they'll call you later. Um, they ended up, because it was a different website platform, they ended up having to put like a Google form on the, on the website. And even then, they still got a few leads out of it. Um, so definitely worth it to consider that on there. Um, you want to make sure that the site is mobile friendly. There's a mobile friendliness check that you can Google. Just Google mobile friendly check. Uh, it'll show up. Um, that will say whether or not Google approves of the site. Uh, it's also found in Google Search Console. I would also highly recommend literally grabbing your phone, whatever type of phone user you are, and going on your website, clicking around, making sure that you can understand how that website works, uh, if, and, and try to view it as a new person, right? If I were to come to this website and I had no idea what, what this was about other than I knew the brand name or I knew that I was searching for a beauty school or I knew that I was searching for a plumber, can I easily contact you? Can I find the things that I want to find? Ask yourselves those questions as you go along. As I mentioned, lead forms, incredibly important. This is ours on our contact us page. You don't even need to have something that's complicated, first name, last name, uh, even name, phone, email, whatever you need to contact them. Make it as simple as you possibly can. Uh, name, address, phone number. That's the important part for Google. So. If you're a single location business, you should have this in the footer of your website. It's something that Google cross checks for local SEO purposes. Uh, it's the name, address, phone number, or the map, or NAP, whatever, however you want to say it, doesn't really matter. Um, that's something that's incredibly important for Google. We, as part of uh, working on local SEO on our site, we take uh, a, a local audit and we check up on that as part of what we do. We also make sure that that name, address, phone number is spread about uh, across all the internet directories that are important for your industry and your state um, in particular. And one of those checks that Google does do as part of the, a small factor in their algorithm is make sure that that name, address, phone number is clearly defined. It's not only important for Google, but it also could be important for somebody who's trying to find you um, in any way, shape, or form. If you have a multi-location business, be sure that there's a simple way for people to find the business closest to them. Now, if you have like two, two locations, you know, usually you, you might be even be able to fit both of those uh, name, address, phone numbers in the, in the photo site. But if you have, you know, five plus, <clears throat> you may have to rotate through things. If you have a hundred plus uh, locations or something like that, you'll need to have like a search function of some sort. Um, so 
say I'm, you, you've all seen this, you're looking for your favorite restaurant and you, and you sometimes Google finds it, sometimes you're like, I need a little bit more specificity to it and you have to go in there and there's just a convoluted way of trying to find that thing closest to you. Um, make sure that it's easy. Uh, make sure that the user experience on that is, is simple because people get frustrated, give up and move on to another thing. Uh, we got a chat. Where should the address be located? That's a great question. Um, so typically the address itself, we want to put in the footer of the website and then also on your contact us page. I would also recommend putting it on a location page if you have multiple locations because that's sometimes people will look there directly. Um, but generally speaking, you wanna put it in the footer or on the contact us page. Hope that answers your question. Okay, next up, schema markup. Uh, this is this is a basically a simplified code that search engines read that points out the most important parts of your website. The easiest example, and that's why I put it up here, is, is like chocolate chip cookies or any sort of cookie recipe or any recipe of any sort. You see this little part down here where it says, this is the rating, this is the, these are the number of votes, how long it takes. Like these are all things that are done um, that when you make a Google search, this is all stuff that shows up in the, the actual search engine results page or SERP uh, altogether. Some of the things that we typically do for most of our clients, because we don't look, work with a lot of cookie, cookie recipe clients necessarily, but we, we do work with a lot of schools and a lot of uh, other home services and things like that, dentists, um, is we'll put in that name, address, phone number, because that, again, that's a key important part. You won't visually see it anywhere, um, but it's important to do. Um, that markup, we have kind of a template that we, that we, that we pull it through, is something that has um, the name, like I said, the name, the address, it has profiles that are, like your social media profiles, that will point out what those are. Um, it's all in the name of consistency and letting Google know more information about you, because the more information Google has about you, the better off you are for ranking purposes. Next up, check for broken links um, and proper internal linking. So there's, there's uh, the, I put that word in there for a reason. So talk about broken links real quick. A broken link is, is really important to have uh, the brokenlinkcheck.com is where I would go. Um, if you are in there, just put in your website, it'll tell you what you have for broken links. You can either change them or make them uh, different. Uh, uh, or, you can, or you can add a 301 redirect like we talked about earlier. Internal linking is important because that's how you go from one part of the website to another. We usually see a lot of this within our blogs and other, other parts of what we're looking at. So what I would say is take the, take the internal links um, for the site and just say, where, if I were a user, where would I want to go next? Right? If I'm on a, a page that then leads me to like a program page, for instance, that says, hey, are you more interested in finding more about this program? Contact us. Put a link to the contact us page, or better yet, have the form ready, ready to go right there, right? Those are simple things that you can do to help A, Google understand your website better, and B, uh, the users navigate to where they want to be. Google um, also really likes the internal links because it counts as like little votes, essentially, of what pages are most important. So if you have, uh, all things equal in Google's algorithm, which is never the case, but just for simplicity's sake, if all things were equal in the algorithm's sake and one page had one more internal link than the other, then the page with one more internal link would be better. Uh, just, just as a general theory. Uh, site speed. You do have to balance speed and functionality. Okay, so understanding that there's sometimes there's things that you need to have on your website. But speed is important. It's a come out as a Google ranking factor. It is something that's done. And I bet you, you yourself have been scrolling through on social media, you click on a link, and then it takes longer than three seconds to load, and you bounce out and go on to the next thing. It, it happens. That's welcome to, welcome to the, the day and age of impatience. If your website's not loading in, in five seconds or less, you're likely going to be A, penalized by Google, and B, people will just jump anyways. Google's whole purpose is to send users to websites that they feel are the best answer to that user's question or query that they made. If your website doesn't make the cut, you'll be penalized by some, by some way, shape, or form. This is a point of emphasis that we want to we also put out there. Do you 
the client, the person who runs the business, know how to make edits on your own website? Or if not you, the business owner, somebody within your organization that you trust. You don't want to be nickel and dimed for simple website edits, first of all. Second of all, if something does go wrong and you need to switch website companies, you want to be able to have control over that. Or if something urgently needs to get done, you need to have somebody who's able to make simple edits to the website. I'm not talking about necessarily having to rearrange things and code stuff. Can you get on the back end of your website and change some content? Can you get on the back end of your website and swap out a photo for another photo? Simple things like that can make a huge difference. You need to understand your website, and it's, since it's the digital face of your business, it's, it's just as vital as any physical structure you may have. Just keep that in mind. Make sure you know how to edit it. After we launch a website, um, uh, if those of you who've launched a website with us, Zach, our project manager, is great. Uh, he will go through and show you how to use different parts of the website, make sure you have an understanding of it. We want our clients to understand how to use their own website and are not beholden to us having to make changes. You know, we're an agency, you send us requests, we'll get to it as fast as we can. I've got, we've got clients, we got lots of clients with different requests, sometimes we'll be able to get something quickly, sometimes we may not. Sometimes something happens over a weekend, you may need to, to get that updated more quickly than what we can get to it. Um, not saying that we can't get to something over a weekend, but typically you want to have or an ability to make simple changes to your website as needed. Um, okay, after you launch a website, can you track if it's doing okay? I would highly encourage you to get familiarized with Google Search Console, Google Analytics, and then this broken link check like I mentioned earlier. Google Search Console tracks all that organic traffic coming to your website. It's really easy to filter by pages. It's really easy to filter by queries to diagnose issues. You can look for major downward or upward trends, hopefully, to spot any problems or wins. Uh, it's something that we do on a regular basis. Uh, and and uh, after we launch a website, we set up a literally a notification for ourselves to go check on it two weeks after the site launch and six weeks after the site launches, just to make sure we don't see any, the website doing good and then it dies, right? or the website's doing good and then it's doing really good and we want to find out why. It helps you with a diagnosis. Same with analytics. This tracks any type of traffic that comes to your website, whether that be via Facebook or Google paid ads or organic search or any other uh, type of uh, analytics. And then it tracks the user behavior while it's on the site. Google Search Console won't do that part of it. It doesn't care. It only cares about how the, how, how the uh, organic is looking. When they get on the website, can I see, okay, People are on the website for a certain amount of time. Uh, we have we see that people are uh, getting from this page to the contact us page. Oh, we're seeing more goal completions come through. Again, look for major downward trends to spot the pro problems. Uh, you can add some filters to it, but basically, what you're looking for is that if you see a flat and then you see it down, or if you see an upward trend and then it goes down pretty dramatically, that may be an indicator of a problem that comes through. Uh, and like I said, brokenlinkcheck.com, super easy way to find any broken links on your site. I highly recommend using that. Um, those are kind of the key points uh, that we have uh, for, the, for this um, webinar. Um, again, like I said, this is all things that we keep in mind that we do with every single website launch we have. We have a full-on checklist that we do, and I really um, hope that you can all uh, do that. Um, Stephanie has a good question. Should your URL have dates in it? Is it okay or is that something we should go away from? So that is a good question. Um, the, the recommendation that we have here is if it's something that you wrote that's going to be evergreen, which should be most of what you have. Evergreen meaning it should stand the test of time. It should be something that stays um, for a long time. The recommendation here is to not have a, have a URL in there. Sometimes people will have the date in the URL. Sometimes people will look at that and say, oh, this is from 2013. This is no longer valid, when it's still actually very much could be. Um, the, that's something that I would, I would recommend getting away from because it's, it dates stuff. And anytime that something's dated, you don't need to. 
the best websites that I that I follow on a regular basis for my job don't put any dates in in there if it's especially if it's something that's important. If you are going to have a date in there, which like I said, it's okay. It just depends on your strategy here. You every time that you update that page, which is something that you should be doing, it's much easier to go into a piece of content and revamp it uh, than try to rank a whole new page. It's so much easier to go in and revamp. If you do revamp it, then you're gonna have to change the date on there uh, because it's say updated for 2020 or whatever that is. Um, that's something that I think that we that that an industry trend from the start was to say, oh yeah, put the date in there, that's important. Um, I think we should start getting away from that because it is something that, especially if you're doing evergreen content, treat it just like you would every other page on the site. It's an important thing to do. Um, any other questions that people may have, please go ahead and put them in the chat. Um, and while you're doing that, I'm gonna, I'll just say if, if you have questions for me specifically or for uh, anybody on our team, you can go into our to oozlemedia.com, fill out the contact us form, or give us a call. Uh, we'll be happy to kind of help you out with whatever we can do at the time. Um, if you feel like you need a, a website check up, uh, that's something we can do uh, just by itself. Um, we 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 pride ourselves on on this because we know we've we've got a we've learned from our mistakes like I mentioned and it's something that we ha, uh, have done a lot of and we see good results when we launch websites. Uh, very rarely do we see websites that launch and then tank. Um, most of the time, if not all the time, we see websites that maintain the course, which is also rare, um, or or improve. Occasionally, what we'll see is a, a website, we launch it, it'll have an initial dip that just has happened because Google's like, oh, whoa, there's new things here. I don't know if I trust this. Uh, and then it'll rebound. Um, but usually it's a pretty short dip, maybe two, two months, three months at the most. But generally speaking, we've seen a lot of pretty flat. It stays pretty much the same because Google, we do a lot of this preemptive work to ensure that the website launch goes smoothly and then we check on it. To make sure that it does so, uh, that that, it, that there's no big problems in and of itself. So, if there's any other um, comments or questions, like I said, send them out, uh, send them to us. We are happy to help you out, and and thank you for for listening in today. Oh, we got one more. Thanks, chat. Thanks, Steph. We will have uh, we'll we will have uh, more to come uh, in the in the realm of. Um, Webinars, stay tuned. Yes, Jane, we will send out a replay to everybody who has um, who has uh, signed up uh, for this webinar, and it will also be available on our blog uh, shortly. Uh, you know, obviously, we have to kind of get everything uh, up, but it will be available soon uh, on our blog, and we will also send a replay out to anybody who registered. Thank you, Jane. You have a great day.